This is bodybuilding. <laughs> Clean hand, dirty hand. Take your chicken with your hands or whatever, right? And secret ingredient to my marinade is not oil. It is. <laughs> what the? All the time wondering how does he do it? Well. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the secret ingredient is soy sauce. It's all good. So, a little bit of water, and then I just do it by color. I don't really care. There you go. That's probably good enough. When you're doing it with uh, fish, you probably want a little bit less because fish is kind of salty. And I noticed that the fish that I make when I get carried away with the soy sauce. So then. I have jerk seasoning. I use this oxtail for my steak when I cut it up into little pieces. And if I don't feel like marinating, when it gets to the sweet spot, I just uh, put this seasoning on. Jerk seasoning. Just a little, little sprinkle. Okay. Don't get too crazy with it. And I started to marinate it beforehand, before I uh, cut it up, because uh, I find that it helps me see the fat when I'm ready to cut it up into little pieces. So when it's, uh, when it's had a chance to absorb the soy sauce mixture, um, then the meat gets dark, and for some reason, the fat in the meat doesn't absorb into the or doesn't absorb the marinade right so after I'm done just give the sink a quick spray I would have cleaned it out beforehand as well and uh, throw that in the fridge for about half a day usually I like to do it for a whole day okay gentlemen just got home from work and usually I cook a little bit more than this. As you can see, it looks quite marinade-y. And nowadays I'll just be dumping it out. Because you guys are giving me, and there was an uproar about salmonella, right? It's when you have it in here and then you cook it. Uh, I never really ran into much trouble with the, <coughs> with the salmonella. But yeah, I do understand what cross-contamination is and all those kind of things. So you want to make sure that your surfaces are clean and you're not using the same light and so on and so forth. But enough of that, that sounds like my high school cooking teacher. So now I'm just going to show one piece here. As you can see, the chicken has been sitting in my little salt mixture. For you guys to show you what I do on the off season, as you can see, the fat is uh, not absorbed into the chicken. So you can now see it a lot more clear, right? So now I'm just gonna cut the chicken fat off. And I, I have a 50% rule, same thing with uh, steak. Um, I try to cut off the fat and if I'm cutting off more fat than meat, I don't mind, right? And that's how I cut all my chicken breast. Now, it's kind of hard to do it at the beginning. I'll just practice with the steak, uh, getting getting the knife skills, because um, the fat in the chicken breast is kind of hard to cut out, right? So once I have that all prepped up, uh, I got this little chunk here. Shwing, shwing. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm very particular about my what I eat and it's funny because I've been like that ever since I can remember as a kid I mean we would cook pork chops at home and I'd be cutting off the fat and I just realized you know it's much easier I mean my mom was always cooking it right but it's easier if you cut the fat off before you cook it so that it doesn't get it back into the meat right so if you take time to prep your meat before you cook it 
Uh, it's a lot easier to get rid of the fat. And then also by uh, cutting it up into small pieces like I'm showing you here, um, what you're doing is you're going to be increasing the amount of surface area. And what that does is for each little tiny cube, that's a less, less of a distance for the, the fat to have to travel out on the George Foreman than is if you were to put some big chunk in there, right? And then more fat will come out just by uh, your cooking techniques by cutting it up into small little chunks. So that's just a small little demonstration of chicken breast. And by the end I'll have like a fair amount of fat because there's no company in this earth that's going to cut off every single little chunk of meat fat. So no, that little piece didn't have it, but there's an, also another section here. Most, most chicken breasts are going to have it. It's right here in the back, right? You'll see this guy, if you flip it over, right? I always just like to stick it right here. Watch your, don't get cut. And then 50% rule. But don't want to waste too much meat there. Gotta, you gotta, you gotta be kind of a decent. I've, I cut myself once in a while, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it in the end. Right? Not say much. So yeah, most of the marinade is gonna be absorbed into the chicken, and you're gonna have a lot of runoff. That's water. But in my opinion. Uh, I think about it scientifically, the chicken is saturated with water and now it really wants to be released. So I think with the gradient being higher, or the gradient wanting to have the water go out of the chicken, it'll also draw a little bit of fat with it, right? So by inducing a gradient like that with the water, you're going to cause more fat to come out with the George Foreman by having it marinated. Right. This might be a little bit too much. So here you go. Dirty hand, knife hand. There's no contamination. Don't act. Right. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait. As soon as I start seeing, uh, as soon as I start seeing uh, the juices flowing, then I'll get my uh, my spatula out and I'll start chopping it up try to open up the flow paths again allow it to drain some more uh, somebody asked me about what what uh, kind of George Foreman I have I've had quite a few George Foremans here I wash my hands so you guys are happy so I don't get all these all these messages contamination salmonella you're gonna die salmonella see now my hands are clean and uh, anyways, um, the George Foreman grill that I like, I don't even know what, what, what it is. Let me have a look here. It is a George Foreman grilling machine model GR144C. Okay. So if you got that, maybe I'll write it down and put a letter or something. But the one thing that I like about this model is, is you know, if you have a look at the back, as I showed the first video, I have something propping it up on the back end, so it has a higher, higher angle for more grease to come out. And then also, when you increase the angle like that, it causes the uh, the trays to get jammed up. So if it gets full when you have lots of chicken, some of the models you can't can't do the old switcheroo because it's uh, it's too low, right? So I like this model because it's nice and big for one, and also you can do the switcheroo without uh, getting all bogged up here, right? So it makes it nice and easy and, and effective. So this is by far for me, I like this this model the best, and just waiting on it. So we'll come back at the sweet spot. All right, so sweet sweet spot. My cupboard doesn't allow me to open it, so I have to open the doors first. Here you go. Oh shit. Yeah, that's one thing about George Foreman's is usually the outside doesn't really cook as very well as the inside, right? So what I usually do is I uh, take one chunk like this, big big chunk here, put it on top here. 
throw this over here, the uncooked part. All right? And then put the cooked part over here. And then do it again. Whoa, come on. <coughs> of course, you don't have to load it up the way I do. I like to get her done. Get her done, bud. This guy. Alright, alright, okay. So now we've got like an even mixture. And I just go to town. You have to be open minded and, and think and think uh, don't don't try to be like everybody else. Very different. You're gonna find when you're bodybuilding everybody's gonna be like here. I remember I was I was uh, at a gathering and, and everybody was having hamburgers and I was gonna have I was gonna have my tuna. And it was like a, a snide remark. He's like, enjoying your tuna? And I'm thinking, I just flex my muscles like this. And I was like, yeah, actually I am enjoying it. You know, it's just, it's all up to you what you wanna do, right? Uh, and, and, and I like bodybuilding. And this is part of it. Diet is very, very important. And this is, the chicken breast for me is probably a good, good 20 to 30% of my diet. So now, because I have a nice, nice setup here, I got uh, a nice, easy, easy transition with the grease. You don't have to worry about making a mess. I hate it when it's kind of like a puzzle. But now I got it all figured out. And anyways, so now I have an empty bottle that I saved. And then. Apparently, somebody on my Facebook that watched my previous video said, it's good that you don't put oil down the drains because it helps save the fish. So you're doing a good thing also by not dumping all the oil down the drain, putting it in a bottle, sending it to landfill. That smells really bad, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so, now, go like this. Right now, well, again, I'm going to push it to the back because I want it to do a little bit more compression. And then, any drop that was hanging by itself, half drop will cling to the other half drop, drop adjacent to it, and fall. Let that cook maybe for another one or two minutes she's done so we got this and the reason why I do this now is because if you just put all that chicken in one bowl or something you'll notice at the bottom it'll get kind of liquidy uh, it'll have like a jelly liquid at the bottom so the way I don't eat that portion of the fat is I put a paper towel on the bottom so that when you have it in there it's nice and nice and dry it's not even that bad I'm used to it I enjoy it actually and this is me no cardio 16 months after my last competition chicken breast Soul fish. I cook steak the same way, any kind of ground beef, George Foreman, and uh, just eating lean, man. No ice cream sundaes at, at 2 in the morning. Sometimes I will, I won't lie, maybe on a Saturday. I like my, uh, my uh, what do you call it? But, uh, you know, I don't get too carried away with that. See, now, I don't see anything dripping anymore. I'm noticing all the dri dripping anymore. I'm noticing all the drippings done. So I'll just turn it off. And that's it. That's chicken breast. So if I fill this layer up, once I put the chicken in there, I'll put another layer of paper towel if it's too full. And then continue, I'll have like double decker. I'll stand right here. I'm gonna do a few poses. I'm gonna stand right here. This is where, remember when I did my first show? This is where I did my contest prep, right? So, that's my standing relax. This is before contest prep. 
and then do a side chest. Tricep. Okay. That's spread. Cheers.